Hello and welcome back to Data Analysis and Visualization. I'm Jovita Christie, and in this video, I'm going to talk about MCDM, which is multi criteria decision making. So let's begin. Life is complicated, and we are often forced to make decisions where several different criteria come into play. And it often seems unclear what criterion should have a priority over other criterions. And mathematicians, being mathematicians, have come up with a mathematical approach that you can use for decision support when you have several criteria or alternatives on which to base your decision. And this technique is called MCDM, which is multi criteria decision making. And it is useful in a multitude of domains. And we are going to see some such domains right now. You can use this analysis methodology in anything, starting from stock portfolio management to even fashion trend evaluation, from disease outbreak control to land development decision making. Anywhere where you require that you have, you know, many criteria and you want to pick one, um, you want to make your decision based on those, and also you want to prioritize certain criterion over another, then you can use MCDM methods to help you evaluate alternatives. Let's see MCDM in action. So imagine a scenario where you are analyzing spatial data to evaluate potential sites for a land development project. So let's say that you have been given the task of selecting one ideal site to develop um, a data center for a company called XYZ Power Company. Now, the land developers who represent this XYZ power company, they have told you that you must consider the following criteria, which I'm going to show you now, uh, while evaluating potential development sites. Now, what is that? What are those criteria? So, the first one is proximity to major roads. So, ease of access is very important, and that's why if there's a highway going somewhere, or some major road where you know uh, it's easy to, to do transportation, then that's a plus point. So a site, a site that means a place would get uh, a score of zero or one based on whether or not it's within a two mile radius of a major road. Let's see the next criteria. The next criteria is proximity to water and electric utilities. Since you want to build a data center. Um, water is required for cooling purposes and electricity, of, of course, is required to keep the servers going. So closer the better when it comes to water and other utilities. So a site would get zero or one based on whether or not it is within a two mile radius of major utilities. The next is future land use, which is also known as FLU designation. So knowing what the future brings is also important. So a site will get a one if it has a favorable FLU designation and a zero if it's not quite so favorable. So future land use would mean what would happen in future to that land or the land nearby. What is, what is the use of that? So it's important to know that as well. Sometimes if you are uh, working for some company, say a factory that requires a, um, a land or a place to start, then you need to make sure that in future there won't be any residential places, uh, facilities nearby because you don't want the fa factory, you know, if, if it's there are any harmful emissions or something, you don't want people living nearby to be affected. And at the same time, you don't want at a later stage to have to move the factory somewhere else because this uh, area has developed into a residential area. So future land use is another thing that's important. So if you find out that in future this is what's going to happen to the land nearby or that land itself, 
then um, if it's favorable for your project, it should get one. If it's not, then a zero. The next criteria is a zoning designation. So future use is important, but you also need uh, favorable zoning designations in the here and now. So if you have a favorable zoning class designation, then that site would get one. If it's not favorable, then it would get a zero. So those are some of the criteria that can help you in decision making. Now, during evaluation, each potential site is designated with an X and Y position at the site center. This represents the geographical location of the site on a map. If you imagine that you are evaluating, say, 20 different sites in your city, um, you'd assign scores to all the 20 sites based on the four criteria. And then the sum of the scores uh, would generate one score for each site. So there are 20 sites, four criteria. You just assign 0, 1 and sum it all up for each site and you get the total score for each of the 20 sites. To develop a data center on a particular site, the site must satisfy each of the four criteria. And therefore, if the score is not four, then you can just eliminate that site from the picture. In mathematics, a set, which you might have studied in set theory, is a group of numbers that shares some similar characteristics. And in traditional set theory, membership is binary. So in other words, an individual member of a set is either part of the set or it's not part of the set. It belongs to the set or it does not belong to the set. If the individual is a member, then it is represented with the number one. If it is not a member, it is represented with the number zero. And MCDM is also characterized by this binary membership. So there's either uh, a criteria, a criterion satisfied or a criterion not satisfied. There's nothing in between. So it's zero or one. But there is a variation, a variant of MCDM, which is known as fuzzy MCDM, uh, which is also denoted by FMDC, uh, FMCDM. And to evaluate uh, the same types of problems as MCDM would do, but the difference is that it refers to the fact that the criteria being used to evaluate the alternatives offer a range of acceptability instead of just binary crisp set criteria associated with traditional MCDM. So you could essentially assign a score between 0 and 1 as well and not just 0 and 1. So let's see a little bit more about it. Evaluations based on fuzzy criteria lead to a range of potential outcomes, each with its own level of sus uh, each with its own level of suitability as a solution. And possible solutions comprise of a spectrum of suitability that's plotted on a chart as something called an efficient frontier. So in fuzzy MCDM, you have the choice to um, assign a value to to a site for a particular criterion, a value between zero and one instead of just zero or one. And this allows you to actually plot all those values on a chart. And then when you plot them on the chart, you create an efficient frontier. And then you can decide which, which particular site you want um, for your project. Fuzzy set membership is expressed as some gradation of membership. Although fuzzy set membership can be represented by zero and one, it can also be represented by any number that lies between zero and one, like I said earlier. And the closer an individual gets to one, the closer it is to being a full member of the fuzzy set. So there is a, a sort of a gradation process in, uh, in terms of acceptability. So it's not just um, accepted and not accepted. It's, uh, it could be something in between. It could be 70 percentage accepted, something of that sort. That is what fuzzy MCDM means.
In Fuzzy MCDM, you'd assign individuals a membership score based on your certainty or uncertainty about the state of that individuals being a member of the set. So you are assigning a score based on your certainty or uncertainty. Sometimes it's not easy to uh, say for sure if something is certain or even say for sure that something is uncertain. So a score of zero and one does not make sense. You might want to consider how much sure and how much unsure it is and based on that assign a score. Encoding and decoding fuzzy set membership allows a decision model to prioritize or rank individual items within that model. So this also allows you to prioritize criteria based on the score given. So we're going to see that in, in a minute now. The purpose of incorporating the fuzzy element into the MCDM approach is simply to build in a little more flexibility in how the decision model works when evaluating alternatives. If you want to include decision nuances and even some gut feel into your decision model, then you can use FMCDM, which is fuzzy multi-criteria decision making. So that's right. If you want to introduce some intuition, gut feeling in, inside your um, decision making process, then you should use fuzzy MCDM because it allows you to give scores between zero and one. To illustrate FMCDM concept, uh, in the following sections, you should consider uh, in the land development example, as discussed in the preceding section where I explained MCDM. So now I'm going to continue with that and continue with the same land development example. And we're going to see FMCDM in action. So in the land development evaluation, uh, we started with 20 sites. And after doing the MCDM evaluation, we were left with, let's say, for example, 11 slides, 11 sites, which means um, those 11 scored a perfect four. But now after these 11, you need to decide which is the most suitable for developing a large data center. So once again, it's back to the MCDM drawing board. So what happens now? This time you're going to use FMCDM to make a comparative analysis of the remaining sites based on the same class of criteria used for MCDM evaluation. So we're going to use the same criteria, but assigning the scores will be done differently. So first of all, it was proximity to major roads. Now in FMCDM, a site is now scored a number between zero and one, including zero and one, uh, based on how close it is to a major road. The closer the site is to a major road, the closer the score gets to perfect one for this criteria. The next criteria was proximity to water and electric utilities. For this, again, a site is given a score between zero and one, and based on how close it is to major utilities, um, the score will be closer to one. So if a site is very close to these utilities, it will have a higher score than a site that is far away from water and electricity. The third criteria, criterion if you remember, was future land use FLU designation. So here you get it if the sites are scored between zero and one, um, they are based on favorability. So once again, favorability is also ranked from most favorable to least favorable. Most favorable would get a score closer to one and least favorable would get a score closer to zero. And the last one was zoning designation. So sites are scored between zero and one based on the favorability of their zoning designation, which is once again ranked from most favorable to least favorable or highest score to lowest score. Now, once you've evaluated all the 11 sites and scored them based on the, on the criteria, um, you simply need to sum the scores for each of the sites. So you just have to, there are four criteria, so you just have to sum up all that and find the total score for each site. 
and the sites whose scores are closest to four will be the most favorable ones and the sites with lower scores will be less favorable uh, to use as a data center development site. So this now helps us to narrow down our decision. And you could also add weight factors to uh, FMCDM. What are weight factors? So you're likely to have a list of several fuzzy criteria, but these criteria might not all hold the same significance in your evaluation. For example, in the land development or site development scenario, the developers may have told you that it's important to them that the site has to be closer to major utilities than to major roads. So that's the thing. They have told you that it's not, uh, they do care about major utilities as well as major roads, but they care more about major utilities. For them, water and electricity are more important than being close to major roads. So what do you do now? You add weights to your MCDM criteria. Okay, so because you want to make sure that um, proximity criterion is uh, weighted, the proximity to utilities is having more weight or more priority than um, proximity to roads in your evaluation. So how do you do that? You can uh, use weighting factors to quantify the relative significance of criteria in your decision model. And the relative importance of utilities proximity and road proximity might look something like the following. I'm, I'm showing it to you now. So if you can add a weight in this manner, you're doing 1.0 into fuzzy score for proximity to major utilities. So site score, this is site score for utility proximity criteria. So you're multiplying that by one. But when it comes to proximity to major roads, you are multiplying it by 0.5. So you see um, whatever is the score of, uh, whatever score the site got for proximity to major roads, that score will be halved. So it's one by two. And when you do that, it has less importance than uh, being close to major utilities. So here the weighting factors are represented by the multipliers that you can see at the start of each of the equations uh, shown in these two uh, equations as you can see. Now we come to when you can use MCDM in your projects. So to use multi-criteria decision making there are two criteria that have to be met. The first one is multi-criteria evaluation. You must have more than one criterion that you need to optimize. If your project or your question or problem has uh, requires only evaluation of evaluation and optimization of just one criterion, then there is no need to use MCDM. It is useful when you have multiple criteria that you want to uh, optimize and uh, find a solution for. And the second reason for using MCDM is a zero sum system. So optimizing with respect to one criterion must come at the sacrifice of at least one other criterion. So what this means is that there must be trade-offs between criteria to gain with respect to one means uh, losing with respect to at least one other. What, what does that actually mean? So there are four criteria, uh, proximity to water and other utilities, water and electricity, proximity to road, zoning, as well as future land development. So there are four criteria, but out of these, it's possible that because you want to stress or you want to give more importance to uh, being close to water and electric utilities, you might give more priority to that. So in the process, you might be giving less priority to something else. Obviously, if you're prioritizing one thing, uh, then you are definitely giving less priority to another. And that's why uh, when you have MCDM, it is a zero sum system and you should use only when you have multiple criteria and you're ready to um, prioritize some criteria over an, some criterion over another criterion, which could help you to make a better decision. But then at the same time, um, it wouldn't consider all criteria equally. So that's what the MCDM system is all about. And I hope you understood it. And I'll be back with the next video. So I'll see you there. And 
Thank you for watching. Thank you.